For more analysis, we can speak now to uh, Kamal Chomani, who is a non-resident fellow at the Tahir Tahrir Institute for Middle East Policy, uh, who joins us from Hamburg. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Uh, a spokesman for the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces says their fighters have repelled Turkish forces in ground attacks. I I'm wondering, how outnumbered are they, in your opinion? Uh, you know, the Syrian Syrian Democratic Forces, they have no other choices other than fighting back against that Turkish incursion into the Syrian territory. And uh, for, the, for, the, for the moment, uh, of course, the SDF has almost 6,000 um, uh, fighters and they can easily fight back against the Turkish army and also the Turkish allied uh, extremist Islamists. However, you know the the situation in 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 the northeast Syria is quite different from other parts of Turkey or the Kurdish insurgency in Iraq during the 1980s or uh, Kurdish insurgency, Kurdish uh, freedom movement against the Turkish government in Turkey because the Syrian the northeastern part of Syria is a plain land. There's no mountains and also due to the Turkish developed developed technology. It's not easy to fight back against the airstrikers. Unfortunately, the Turkish uh, the Turkish uh, airstrikers are bombing the civilians, are bombing the, the cities, and the, the the Syrian Democratic Forces and the Kurdish forces, you know, it's uh, there. Even though they they try to fight back outside the the cities, however, the Turkey the Turkish army is targeting the civilians in the name of that they are targeting the. Um, YPG or the PYD or the Kurdish uh, SDF uh, headquarters within the cities, which have led to almost 25 casualties and, and, and tens of other people have, been, have, have got um, uh, injured. In terms of, of the number, the, the SDF can fight can fight back the, the Turkish army, but uh, it is the, 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 the kind of, of, of balance of, of power is, is imbalanced. In the meantime, you know, a, f a few a few uh, weeks ago, uh, the United States mediated between the the SDF and also the Turkish part so that to reach an agreement on a safe zone. And one of the agreement, one of the, one of the points of the agreement is that uh, United States convinced the Syrian Democratic Force to destroy the fortification on the border. And after they destroyed all the fortifications, all the uh, you know YPG and SDF. Um, checkpoints and um, in tunnels and fortifications on the border, then the Turkish army started. So now, you know, the situation is quite imbalanced because um, the SDF had already withdrawn from the border and the Turkish army, apart from this is a huge army and it's a NATO member supported by the European countries, by the United States and the kind of developer developed weaponry they have. In the meantime, they are also supported by the, um, you know, former ISIS, ISIS remnants, by the um, so-called Free Syrian Army, and also the uh, Al-Qaeda uh, affiliates. So all this kind of uh, imbalance ha has led to a kind of uh, panic within the Kurdish population where they have, where they have tried, we have started to flee the, mm. the cities and the situation is, you know, the, 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 the situation is quite dangerous because we have a kind of experience with the Turkish occupation in, in, uh, in, in Syria, uh, which was last year happened, they occupied Afrin. And at the beginning, they were trying to convince that, uh, uh, you know, they, they were justifying their occupation in the name of trying to, um, you know, that, that Turkey has... Um, security concerns about the border, but later it, it turned to, according to the international report in, in Human Rights Watch, that there is a, a currently uh, an ethnic cleansing happening in Afrin. Okay. And people have uh, freaked out because they are expecting the same to happen okay, uh, once the Turkish army and its allies enter the Kurdish and Arab cities on the border.
All right, we're running a bit short of time. Let me just uh, ask you, uh, skipping ahead to sort of what the United States is thinking here, because last year we heard President Trump uh, saying, and I quote, uh, the Kurds fought with us, they died with us, and he insisted that America would never forget. Uh, he now appears to have changed his mind. Um, but do you think, well, f first of all, why do you think he's changed his mind? And second of all, do you think that he has any consequences, any retaliatory consequences up his sleeve, really, uh, to punish the Turkish uh, army and the Turkish government for going ahead with what he called this ill-advised operation in northern Syria? Unfortunately, you know, the United States, even though it's a democracy and um, uh, it's a huge, it's a big democracy, but uh, it seems that the, the, the president... Donald Trump, President Donald Trump is making the decisions unilaterally, and it's the second time that that he decides without returning to the to the um, to the army, and also even uh, the global coalition to defeat ISIS is a 60, uh, 60 countries uh, uh, coalition. Even without informing those members, he just decided to withdraw from the. To, who is drove, uh, it is, uh, you know, his soldiers from the border. And um, I, I really don't understand why Donald Trump is making a decision at the moment, other than, you know, he might have been promised by, by Turkish President Erdogan something that we don't know what is it. Okay. In the meantime, um, the, 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 the global coalition were... were have been working quite well with the SDF and all all the coalition members they have they know that you know ISIS has not even though uh, physically has been defeated but ideologically ISIS is there and there are also mm. thousands of, of ISIS detainees in the Indeed. in the a lot of concern a lot of concern uh, as you say that are controlled by the SDF absolutely a lot of